Hey everybody, it's Josh Pierce again at underscore J Pierce. I've got another image tutorial to walk you through today. Uh, this one is titled Valley. I had a few requests for this image. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through uh, the process of creating this. We're going to make some of these tall rock formations. Um, then we're going to cover them with these plants. And then we've also got a foreground here uh, with some rocks and a little trail going up and then water and sky and a uh, beam of light so and then we've got some clouds here too um, so I'm going to walk you through all this stuff um, I'm going to show you uh, a way to get through this image uh, very quickly um, it's not a lot to it it looks very uh, complicated but um, we're going to uh, we're going to jump right in, and I'll show you uh, all the steps I did to create it. So here we go. Um, so let's jump into Cinema, and the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to start off with our rock formations. So I'm going to start by making a cube, and we're going to make it uh, 200 by 800. 800. Does that look good? That looks pretty good. And then we're going to increase the segments a whole bunch. Um, let's go with 30 by 30 by 30. And we're going to switch over to hidden line. I like hidden line. Um, I'd like these to be a little more square, so we'll go up to 40. Give it a few more, 50. And that's pretty good. Maybe we don't need so many on the top and bottom, so 20 by 20. That's probably good. Um, so the idea is we want to create enough polygons that we can make a good mesh. And let's break it apart. And now we're going to jump into sculpting our rock formation. So the best tool to start with when you've got a hard flat surface like this and you want to start making it look organic is grab this flatten brush. And I'm going to start off around this size and we'll bring it down to a medium pressure. Let's see how this works. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So we just start rounding off these edges. Rounding them off, rounding them off. And the sculpting um, can get pretty, um, it can become very uh, relaxing to do. You know, it's like painting um, in a lot of ways. And then I'm going to grab the wax brush, start bringing up on this. And I feel like I really don't have enough subdivisions. So um, what's cool with the sculpting brushes is I can grab, let me pop out this menu, um, subdivide, and then you'll see I've got a sculpting tag here and you don't have to worry too much about the tag but subdivide um, I don't have any subdivisions yet so hit it again and there we go now I've got a bunch more subdivisions and this seems like something that I'm gonna be able to work with a little better and maybe we go one more subdivision now that that's given us some nice detail so, you know, you just want to start uh, raising up some areas, pushing down some areas, and uh, let's see. We want to pull out, we want to make it a little larger on the bottom half. So, using the pull brush. And we're just going to make it larger on the bottom, just all around all sides. Sort of want it to sh be shaped like a bowling pin here. And then um, I'm going to jump over to, um, well, what I'm going to do is go back to Garard and go with textures off. So I can see what I'm doing a little better. And then we're going to uh, use the pull brush again. 
and load up this floor pattern and start adding some rocky texture to it. And there's going to be, we're going to use a rock texture on this as well. But this is a good starting point so that we get enough detail and so it looks like so that's pretty cool looking cool looking rock formation and maybe we angle this down and do some like this and then you see when we angled them we get um, sort of these more vertical lines that's pretty cool looking um, so let's jump into texturing this thing so I'll go ahead and add a light and uh, let's see I want my scene facing this way because I like to have my Z depth always going in this direction I like to set my camera over here it's just a pet peeve I guess but um, it helps because I always know and when I'm in the top view that this is the back <laughs> and this is the front because um, otherwise if I start putting my camera wherever I feel like you know then I get lost and then I have to figure out which direction my camera is facing so this just helps me to keep everything keep the scene in track in my mind have everything facing one direction so um, I did that and I've got my light and I'm going to tip it back for sort of over here. So let's look at our scene again. This is, uh, we got sky back here that's going to be illuminating this way, and then actually our light's coming in from the left hand side. So let's go ahead and stick with that. Um, we'll set our light up kind of like that there. And for our texture, I'm going to use. Uh, we're going to be using RD textures again. If you guys watched my previous tutorials, uh, I like to use these RD textures. Um, this one, number 14, is the one I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and drop that on. Wait for it to load. Drop that on. And let's see. Let's start getting into the live viewer. Okay, so um, I have a preset for my Instagram renders, and that is 1080 by 1350. So we're going to use my 1080 by 1350 so we can get a good idea of what our composition is going to look like. And then by hitting Control V, we're going to set the opacity to 80 so that I can see where my composition is going to be. And I can see right now this texture is not looking all that great and uh, maybe we need some more tiles. Looks like we need more vertical tiles than we do horizontal tiles. So that's that's pretty cool and, and maybe I added too much texture with my brushes so um, because it's starting to look a little wonky and you know once you get this inside the live viewer you get a better idea of what the shape really needs to look like. And it's looking pretty cool. Um, you know, I could go through and refine this shape even more. I'm just going to do a little bit, make it a bit wider at the bottom. Uh, turn off my stencil and just pull it out some. And you can even use a grab brush for this. And then I think I'm going to go and smooth out some of this detail a little too hard.
All right, well, that looks pretty cool. It's just a big rock. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So we got our big rock, and um, we're just gonna go ahead and start setting this into the scene. So um, what I'm gonna do is now cover it in plants. So we're gonna use uh, the Forester plugin again. I'm gonna grab a tree, and I think the tree I wanna use is uh, probably my favorite, most simple tree which is going to be this eucalyptus and we're going to scale it down a bunch increase the viewport levels and let's take a look see what this looks like um, that's cool looks pretty cool to me and um, I have a setup a greenery texture, leaf texture. Um, I'll show you guys what this looks like. It's uh, image texture and uh, this is just the leaf out of Forrester with a color correction, a color correction and a random color mixed together and that's piping into albedo, specular and transmission and I have the IOR at 1.1. and I'll apply that leaf texture to my leaf material and to get this to look right we're going to switch over to path tracing and to be in path tracing I like to set my samples at 350 and GI clamp to 4 and now I grab an octane scatter drop the tree in here and set the cube as my source and we'll set the distribution to surface and we'll turn down the normal line so they're all facing up and we have probably too many 350 and then we're going to use the normal threshold to clamp down and exclude some of the sharper slopes and of course our tree is just too big way too big okay so that's cool because we want we want the trees to be pretty small um, to keep the rock looking like it's a big rock formation and maybe we'll go a few more now uh, 500 and then we're going to add in some randomization by using a MoGraph random effector and we'll go ahead drop that in and we'll set our parameters up like this we don't want any position movement so you can just uncheck that we want scale around 0.4 and rotation whatever you want 900 seems to work well for me so that's cool that looks pretty cool and now what I'm gonna do is grab these two group them together inside of a null and actually I'd rather have my axis point uh, down here towards the bottom so grab them into a null and what I'm gonna do is do an instance and when I use an instance, I'm going to turn on render instance. And now when I move this around, uh, it doesn't always refresh right away. It doesn't always work right away. But this scatter will instance for me. Maybe I have to have render instance off. Well, maybe that's not going to work today. Oh yeah, there it is. So now I have this one and this one, and let's go and look at my original image and see. So there's a big one in front, a second one here. So 
so we have this big one in front here and it's probably even a little bit closer and let's see let's get our camera placed properly That looks about right. Maybe we're over just a little more here like this. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, this is gonna be obviously a bit different than this render, but you know, um, it's good, good to use it as a guide. And so then we have our second one over here. Null, grab this null instance and slide it around and you can see that the scatter doesn't always like to behave exactly properly, but it's really helpful to instance these scatters because it's going to save a lot of a lot of trouble. Cool. So we have our first two, and let's slide. Let's hold Control and push it back in space. And we'll set up two more back here, one probably here, one probably here. And we'll rotate them. And then in our image we have, oh, I lost my image. Well, we have a big one that's going to be back here. So we're going to do one more instance. And switching to object mode up here, I can now scale this instance way up. And we'll set it somewhere right here. And now let's just do two more, even farther back. One here. We want to keep this central line free because I'm going to put a water plane here, and then there's going to be a beam of light. And I want to be able to see that beam of light. So I'm just creating a pathway to be able to see all the way down. And one more. Even farther back. Okay, that's cool. So once I get these where I want them to be, um, yeah, that's about what I want right there. And maybe we want one more back behind here that's going to be really big too. And once we start layering in the fog, um, all this depth is going to pop. Cool. And so now I'm just going to grab a plane. Do I want to use a plane? Let's do a landscape. We're just going to slide it up close and Let's set a camera in here so we save our vantage point. And let's take this and slide it right up under the camera. And lift it up. 
then we're going to make it very flat. Maybe even angle it away from the camera a little. So this is for our, going to be our foreground. And we'll go ahead and use the same rock texture and tile it out maybe to two by two. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, let's grab some plants. I'm just going to duplicate my scatter again and set the landscape as the source. And I don't want those trees. I just would rather have some flora. So let's use the multiflora. And I always uncheck change materials. And uh, we'll start with, um, let's try this wild grass. And let's apply our leaf texture to that. And that looks great. And we're going to bring it down. Cool. So now we're starting to get a nice little foreground. And maybe we need more. Uh, let's go up to 2,000. Let's go up to 3,000. And I think I'm getting uh, some of it cut off because of my displacement. So sometimes I just use this position modifier under the octane scatter and modify the Y, raise it up maybe five. Yeah, that's cool. So let's add some variation to our front grass by using, let's see, let's try this one. That's cool, but it's too big. That's kind of neat. Um, this looks too big still. And um, let's use uh, another of my favorites. If I can find it, it's called Knotweed. Here you are, Knotweed. I think it's got a great look. That looks really cool. Um, now I'm going to just push it down slightly because I'm losing too much of my ground here. And uh, cool. So now we're going to use a plane effector again like in my previous tutorials except that this time we're going to do something a little different. We don't want position. We want scale. We want uniform scale. And right now it's just slowing down too much. We want negative one. We want to set the fall off to a box. And we're going to bring our box right up here to the camera. And we're going to lift it up right to here. And we're going to drag it out. And we're going to turn it back on. And now I can just use this box to create a little straight path. And it looks like our camera's turned just a little bit. That's fine. We just turn this. So now I have a open patch here just by using a box plane effector. And you can set the fall off for this too. Um, you can turn it all the way up.
and let's open it up some more and you can see maybe I don't want it so high and maybe it's too wide now so this is a good good thing to play with um, so you can try and get the look that you're after and let's lift this back up a little more now in my image I had uh, a man sitting here that was glowing um, I'm not going to go through that particular thing in this tutorial um, but you can put whatever person you want right here you can put yourself you can put your friend uh, whoever you like so let's put our water in now um, I like to use a disc and just open it all the way up and let's bring it way down and now I'll show you my water preset that I have built looks like this it's a specular material I have a noise octane noise it's set to Perlin 12 octaves 0.5 Omega and then the gamma and contrast are right in this range here and then I have a scattering medium going into the medium it's set at about 1.1 um, other settings here you can pause if you like and then I just have a blue color and a white color or this is black I have a black color and a blue color and uh, that's how I have it set up so it's just some bump and a scattering medium there is uh, the reflection is set to the default and the roughness is set to the default so I'll go ahead and apply my water material and some nice looking water happening now and um, in my original image I actually went ahead and took, so, took a couple of landscapes and stuck them way back in the distance just to cover any well let's see pretty far back there huh just to cover any um, any strange artifacting that may happen at the uh, horizon line and for these let's see where are you somewhere over here and now when I have, have this uh, <laughs> plane effector here is really obstructing my view so I can go to my plane effector and just uncheck visible so that I don't have to see it so um, my other landscape is back here somewhere that's fine just leave it right there um, just to cover up now we're gonna put it in clouds and fog and so it's not gonna be too visible back there um, so we're just reuse our rock texture again for these guys and that's fine um, that's that's as much as it needs to be because it's gonna be so that's gonna be so obscured and uh, now I'm gonna add in some more sky I like to keep my sky next to my daylight I'm gonna set the daylight to mix sky texture and then I'm gonna grab uh, an image texture and load it in here I'm using again the HDRIs available from no emotion HDRI and uh, I think it's in here I have one called 603C this one this is a great great looking HDRI So that's some nice pretty sunset sky and I have this instance here I want it sometimes I can cheat these up pretty far you can see it's it's out of the water but you don't you don't see it and 
now I can add in a beam of light. So I just usually use a cylinder and just stretch it out and set the radius to 2. And I want to tuck this actually back behind my mountains. That was another reason that I put the mountains back there was so that the beam wouldn't look Sorry about that little glitch in the recording. So um, now I've got my cylinder back here and I'm uh, going to make a emission texture for that. And we'll do that by creating a texture emission and then using an RGB spectrum. And then I like to grab something from the sky nice peach color and set this around 50 and enable surface brightness and I'll drop that onto my cylinder and now I've got a straight tree and there it goes it went away so uh, we'll see if these scatters actually will work um, I think that is how I built it um, but sometimes when you instance an instance it doesn't necessarily always work so I think my cylinder's a bit too wide, so we'll just set this to 5. And uh, let's lay in our fog layer. So use an octane fog volume. And I'm going to use some very simple settings. Very first thing always, turn up this voxel size editor. And let's use 10,000 by 10,000 by 10,000 and then in our medium tab I'm going to go full white for the absorption and full white for the scattering and then turn this up turn this up turn this down and start playing with it and let's see I want to slide it back in space. So. Slide it back in space. So. And then bring it down some too, so that our sky gets clear. And that looks pretty cool. So then all I'm going to do, last thing, is I'm going to use a VDB volume and I'm going to use one it's called let me just find it first it's from the um, 10 free VDB clouds and it's called this entire cloudy sky VDB and I'll set it on hectometers and take the density down and we're going to set these to white also and now sometimes when you have fog overlaid with VDBs um, you get some weird errors and really the only way I know around that is to set these volume step lengths to be identical so we'll try 20 and 20 and now I see that my VDB cloudy sky VDB which looks like this and if we lift it up you can see it's a bunch of scattered clouds it's probably not exactly what I want it needs to be a little bigger so um, 
someone in my last tutorial showed me that I can scale this by using this scale button or using the uh, setting it to object and we're just going to scale it up a little thanks for that tip it's very helpful and I don't want it to be obscured here in the center so um, I'm going to slide it over and maybe just have that edge there and then I can duplicate this and slide it over again to where I need it uh, too far somewhere in here and now I've got a cool looking misty valley scene and I can start playing with where I want these misty clouds to land maybe I want some more over here and maybe I want some more density on my fog um, this is all up to you guys how you want this look to be and I've got my sunlight coming in and I just like to boost up this light some I like to maybe increase the gamma and increase the power and that gives me a little bit more uh, light filling the scene and if I just tweak where my camera is just a little bit and try and get this look to be right where I want it to be somewhere in this area and this is where you get to play artistically once you have your scene all set up and you can um, start playing around with different camera angles and you know let, maybe I don't want to be here maybe I want to zoom out um, and you get you get to see some cool looking looks you know um, if I move my camera over here now you know I have these islands peeking out of the ocean um, and there's so many different things that you can do um, with this fog and these clouds and these great mountain structures these awesome rock formations covered in greens and you can go through and add detail um, just by you know changing the plants and changing the rock texture and adding different kinds of plants and you can go in and add you know models of rocks um, this is all just primitives and textures and um, some very simple um, mostly free items um, the uh, the RD textures um, are very powerful and um, I really think they're well worth the money um, because there's so much that they can do so much that they're capable of um, just in terms of you know, I was able to create these massive cliffs. Um, you can do cliffs, you can do landscapes, um, you can do individual rocks. There's so many, uh, so many options. Um, but there are some other good rock textures out there that you can pick up for free that you can find. Um, so that's about it for here. Um, I'll see you guys in After Effects. So that's about it. Um, then there's just uh, some light compositing that I did, and uh, you know that's it. So all I did in the compositing was, um, you know, I added some more um, light, and uh, and obviously in this image I've taken some trees and scattered them along here. Um, but you can do that just by adding in. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, you know adding in an additional tree um, I'll show you another tree I love to use uh, this one Albizia and uh, you want to set the viewport levels up higher and tree size is way too big
and looks like I need to split out my scatter and that's easy to do I want to change the seed and reduce this number to maybe just 150 there we go and one of the things you can do uh, with these trees is you can go in and modify them and so um, let's make it bigger so we can see it's sort of covering everything and now I feel like my uh, plane effector is too wide and maybe not in the exact right place where I need it to be so we'll just narrow it some more and scooch it over and now I've made these trees bigger so that you can see and we probably just have too many here uh, let's go down to 50 and what you can do is the branch levels uh, give you a lot of control of the shape of the tree and so instead of them being real clustered like this I want them to stick up like this where they're all sort of stringy looking so I can go into the branch level one and increase the branch length and now just exaggerate it so you can see I have these cool like planty looking arms with leaves coming off of them and that looks pretty neat so We'll leave it like that and then just bring down the size and bring it down. And maybe it needs point oh one five. I made my scene very small. Point oh one eight. Yeah, now you can see there's some more stuff in here and I don't think I have a very nice looking seed so that looks cooler I have some plants here and another one right here and it looks like we're coming to the edge of this path of this jungle and there's this amazing valley beyond um, so this is cool and let's see if I start increasing this number if I can get And if you don't always like the seed, I can just grab one, grab a duplicate, and place it exactly where I want it to be, which is right here. Nice, happy little tree right here. So now it feels like we're coming out of this jungle into this uh, valley, and we see this amazing beam of light shooting down into this valley with water running through it and these amazing rock formations on either side covered in trees and um, it evokes you know it evokes a feeling of uh, place a sense of place of some sort of alien planet so uh, that's that's pretty much it um, I think I covered everything and then uh, you know just some some post effects and you can do this and you can do your post work in Photoshop and you can do post work in After Effects I use After Effects and uh, you know you just go to town with color correction and you get um, you know your saturation levels up and you do your levels um, all really fun stuff that's really where the magic happens but this is the nuts and bolts and I uh, just wanted to walk you through it and thank you very much everybody